my friends, this is Shelly from Koala Knits and Knacks. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make these beautiful boot cuffs. Now they um, are reversible. This is the, the regular knit side, but I also have on the other side, I have them in um, a rib knit. And so I'm going to take them off. I'm going to show you these on a taller boot. And you're going to see what they look like um, with the rib knit, but also there's two different two different ways to wear them. Fold it over a lower boot as a cuff, and I absolutely love this. I'm going out tomorrow, and I can't wait to wear these. I think um, I'm going to have it like this, and then I've got uh, you know a long uh, vest that I'm going to wear, and it's just going to be so nice. I can't wait to uh, to get dressed and go out tomorrow. All right, so this is the the low boot cuff, and I'm going to show you how I wear them on my high boots. I don't know if you can get a, if you can see the difference, but I thought I would quickly show you. I switched it around, and this is the rib knit side. So I just think I like I love the texture of this rib knit too. I think it looks so pretty. So I've got my my boot cuff tucked in underneath the the rim of my boot, and then just like that. See? Oh, you can wear it up like that too. That would be kind of cool. And then fold it down over top of the laces. And there you have it. So this is what they look like when you put them under high boots. Okay, I just love them. I think they look so great. I've used Craft Smart. Let me just grab it here. I'll show it down here. <laughs> Craft Smart Value Tweed in gray. And it is, it is wonderful. I think this looks so cute, so nice. Okay, now um, again, this, this side here, when it's at the top of my leg, it's stretched out so you don't see, you can't tell as much, but this is this is the um, ribbed knit side that we did, that we're going to do. And now I chose to do um, my ribbed knits a little bit different than, than if you were to do a ribbed knit on a pair of gloves. I, I spaced it out a little bit differently. So you'll see that in the video, but I hope you enjoy this tutorial. I just love this. It's so great. So this is um, underneath my tall boots. And when I put it on the, on the lower boots that I showed you first, um, they are, it's, it's tucked in right underneath the, the uh, um, cuff of the boot. This is the boot here. And I put it on my foot and it tuck, gets tucked in right inside of there and then flipped over top, flipped over the edge of the boot. So if you have low boots or high boots, this works just absolutely beautifully. So thank you for joining me in this tutorial. You're going to need your Addy 22. You're going to need your yarn and you're going to need uh, a crochet hook and of course a darning needle. All right, so we'll see you in the tutorial. Take care guys, see you soon. All right, I think we're ready to start. Um, I've got, uh, I'm downstairs in my craft room and the lighting isn't very good. It's dark outside now because it's later in the evening. So I have this little light shining on, on my machine and I hope it's not uh, too bright, but we're going to give it a go anyways. So we're going to use waste yarn for this project. So go ahead and grab yourself a, a waste yarn color that's contrasting to your working yarn because um, you're going to need to be able to find your stitches quite easily um, at the end of the project. So let's um, bring our last white needle and our first black needle in line with our yarn feeder. And uh, if you notice, I have that little red divider marked with a permanent black marker, and that helps me to know when it comes around. We're gonna do the long tail cast on with our waist yarn. So you're gonna go behind that first black needle, in front of the next, behind, and in front, all the way around. Until we get to the last white key, and then our needle, and then it should be behind that needle. You open your yarn feeder, you insert your yarn, Close the guide and generally I have a rule where I do seven or eight rows of waste yarn but for this project I'm going to do more because in the end when we are dropping stitches and then picking them up again to make our ribbing um, we're fiddling around a lot with our piece and so I just don't want the end to come loose. It's not as important with the waste yarn that we use at the end of the project, but the, the yarn that we use, the waste yarn that we use at the beginning of the project, we do not want it to come unraveled until it's time for it to be unraveled. And sometimes if you do less rows, um, it starts to unravel and then, and then you're in a pickle. So I'm going to do quite a few. I think that should be good. So now I'm halfway around my last row of waste yarn, so I'm gonna set my counter to zero, okay? I always do that halfway around um, my last row so that I'm ready to begin. 
I'm gonna grab my scissors that are way over there. I'm gonna cut that waste yarn off, open my yarn guide, and I'm going to put that between the last white and the first black needle. Then I'm gonna go ahead and grab my working yarn. Insert it into my yarn feeder, close the latch, put it between the last white, the first black, and then I do three or four needles, and then I give this a tug. Watch this one right here. I give it a tug until that pops underneath, because then what that does is, is um, uh, the beginning of my row, the stitches are the same, are the same thick, are the same tension as the rest of the project. So I find that to be um, very helpful. Okay, and then I'm going to begin, and my row counter is gonna keep me in line here. And I'm gonna just crank out 75 rows, okay? So again, normally I never do that much waste yarn. And, and in, even in this project, that's probably too much, but um, I, I would rather be safe than sorry. So I'm going to now keep cranking until I get to 75 rows, okay? This is a fun project because, you know, I, I experimented doing this pattern with less rows and it does work, but I like the fact that, um, that with this many rows, I'm able to make it reversible. So on one side you see the ribbing and on the other side you just see the basic knit. And so you can wear it two different ways, but you can also um, wear it as a as a, a boot cuff for your taller boots or for your short boots. Uh, you can you can fold it over the rib, rim of your boots and it looks beautiful too. Or you know what? Um, my husband and I live by a provincial park and in the wintertime, we're fr I'm from Manitoba. In Canada and in the winter time it can get freezing here but we still like to go for walks on trails and and uh, in the park there and this would make an excellent when I'm not using it as as a boot cuff I will use it as a leg warmer <laughs> seriously I'll put them both on in their length right right on my lower leg and underneath my um, my jeans or my pants that I'm wearing and uh, they will keep my legs warm or you can put them right over top of your jeans or your sweatpants, whichever way you choose to do it. Um, leg warmers generally go over top of your pants, but um, you know, I don't want to stretch it out too much, so I'd probably put it underneath. But anyways, different options for this. It's a fun, fun project. So you're gonna keep going until you get to 75 rows, and then I'll see you back. Okay, so I just clicked on row 74, that's 75, and I'm gonna finish that row until that black divider is in the in the middle of my yarn guide there, then I know that I'm at the end of my row. Then I'm gonna take my waste yarn. Now here's a little tip. Take a different color waste yarn than what you used at the start, but remember which color you used at the start because that's the, um, that's the, it, it's important because we need to um, drop our stitches from the beginning of our projects, which is way down in, in the, um, bottom here. Um, this is this is the end and we're not going to be dropping stitches on this end. So I want to make sure I remember which is the beginning when I take it off my machine. So I know that I'm going to be working from the end that it has the blue waist yarn. So either that or if you have the same color waist yarn, put a little marker um, in here somewhere to show you that this is the end of your project, not the beginning. Okay. And it's not so important that I have a lot of rows on, on the end because uh, I'm not working a lot with it. So I'm gonna stop there. I think that's seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's eight actually. Um, but I just need to do my normal. I'm gonna put that, cut that yarn, open my guide, stick it between the last white and the first black needle. Then I'm going to crank. Second time around it loosens and then I just help it off just like that, okay? And then you take it off and you've got your, your piece that's um, beautiful. So what I do now with everything that I take off is I stretch it lengthwise, widthwise, and I stretch it lengthwise. Give it a good tug. And it just makes everything soft and smooth and lines up your stitches. And now we're ready to begin um, the next part, okay? So I'm gonna remove my machine from my table and I'll see you back in a minute. All right, so now that we have it all stretched out and ready to uh, begin the next part, we're going to turn our work inside out. Okay, so you wanna make sure that you've got the, these two ends tied with just one single tie on both sides, just because you don't want it to come apart. You're gonna put your hands in there, you're gonna grab it, and you're going to just turn the whole piece inside out. You know, I really love the, the um, 
inside look to the garter stitch. I think that looks very pretty too. Um, but that's uh, the side that we're going to start working on for dropping our stitches so we can pick them up and, and uh, do the, have the purl stitch so it makes the ribbing, okay? So we're gonna turn it around so we come to our first stitch so we can untie that knot, okay? Now, remember, you need to you need to be working from the from the side that you started with, okay? And that was my blue waist yarn. When I when I pull on this working yarn color here, the the stitch that it's coming out of is this one. It's going it's looping under and it's going under here. So this is my first stitch. Then if you go to the left a little bit, there's two stitches that are one on top of each other. This top one is my 22nd stitch. It's my last stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and take some stitch markers. Let me just grab them here. Now, if you watch my videos, you know that I use uh, I use bobby pins for my stitch markers. But for this particular project, I need to use um, these ones that I can close. I happen to have these ones, and I'm I'm going to use these ones that can close because it will help me not to uh, lose my stitches. So I'm going to take three of the same color. I'm going to put it in my first stitch. So we determined that this was my first stitch. I'm going to put it in my last two stitches. So my 22nd and my 21st stitch. Now that's just because these three stitches I'm not working. Um, we're not going to do... Um, we're not going to do the rib stitching on, but it just helps me to know that this is the beginning and this is the end. Um, and it helps me when I'm, when I'm, you know, coming around the circle and also when I'm um, finishing off at the end when I'm attaching both sides of my tube together, um, then I, I know what stitches to look for, okay? So I'm going to now take um, my knitting needle that has a little tube on it. Now, if you have a centro, you got this in your centro. And I love this little thing because um, it's just, I use it quite a bit actually, but for this, this is exactly what we're gonna do. We're going to take our, our needle and we're gonna put it under the first stitch, bring it through. Then we're going to skip the second one, okay? Because that's the stitch we're gonna drop. And we're going to go into the third, and the fourth. And I'm gonna skip that next one. Then I'm gonna do the next two. You have to go slowly because you have to keep twisting your needle so that this tube straightens out. So I've gone into the next two. I'm gonna skip this one. All the stitches that I'm skipping are the ones that we're going to drop and do our, um, our pearl stitch so we can get our ribbing. So I'm gonna leave that one. I'm gonna go into this one and the next one. And I'm going to leave that next one. And then I'm going to go into the next one. We're gonna go back and, and get those ones in just a second. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with those ones, but we're gonna just continue going around here. So one, two, and I'm going to miss this one. Now, if you um, have gone online and you've looked up rib stitching um, on YouTube, um, and you mostly see it with, with mitts, the rib stitching of a, the top of a mitt. And what they'll do is, is, a, is every second stitch they'll miss to do a rib stitch. Um, but for me, I'm doing every third stitch because I like... I like the look of that. I like how it spreads it out a little bit more. Um, and and uh, I just... I like... I like the look of it better for this project. Um, so that's why I'm choosing to catch two and miss one. Now I know that I have an odd, I have 22 stitches, so that when you do the math, it doesn't really work out. Um, but at the back of my, let me just grab my other, I'll show you, I'm gonna just grab my, my other. There we go. Oh, get into this tight space. So I, I like the fact that there's this wider space here and then and then like because this is this this is the um area that we've um dropped down and we've redone it on the inside part of it but these i i like this wide band here uh instead of having it just equal like i don't know how to explain it i think when we do every other one there's only there's only one row of stitches here right now you can see that there's two rows there's 
this stitch and there's this stitch. If you do every other one, then you've got this space here and then you've got one row and then you've got a space and you've got one row. And that's a nice tight ribbing stitch, but I, I really, really love the looks of this, so I've chosen to do it this way. Um, you can, if you rather would do a tighter, a tighter spacing, then you can um, go ahead and, and drop every other stitch. But for me, I'm doing it, I'm doing it this way. Okay, and well, and I know because there's 22 stitches, it doesn't work out. But at the back, at the back of my project, you'll see that there's three rows there. Okay, where's my little pick here? There's one, two, three. Okay, so that is the only place where there's three instead of two, and I don't mind that because I think you know I'll put that on the side or I'll put that in the back. For me, I'm going to let that be the back, um, and so I think it's uniform all the way around with two rows, but in the back there's three, and that that uh, allowed me to to make a wider ribbing like this. So that's that's the reason why I've gone ahead and done it that way. Okay, so now we've gone. Let's go back to this one. We've gone underneath two. We're going to miss this one, and then we're going to pick up these last two. Oops, getting me a little knot in there. Okay, let's untwist that. Pick up these two. Okay, so I've picked up 22 stitches around. I want to um, then go ahead, and I'm choosing to use all the same color for my stitches that are dropped, just makes, vi I'm a visual person and it makes it a little bit easier for me. So I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna go around. I'm gonna pick up that dropped stitch and then I'm gonna go around the tubing there. Now, if you don't have a um, circular needle like this, um, I would encourage you to go out and find one in a secondhand store, or, you know, pick up one in Michael's or wherever. But if you don't have it, do the same exact thing that I'm doing with a wide, maybe a five weight yarn or double strand of four weight yarn um, and do the same thing and you'll get the same, you'll get the same um, outcome, okay? It's just so that you can pick up your stitches later. So I've gone ahead and I've picked up that first one. I know I've got two that are already on my, uh, my needle there. So I'm gonna go underneath and I'm gonna find that next stitch that was dropped and I'm gonna pick it up and I'm gonna go around my tubing just like that. And the reason why is because we're going to let go of this waste yarn. We're gonna take it right off. So all the only thing holding the stitches is will be this, this needle. Um, but the reason why I'm putting these stitch markers on and holding the stitches is because if I remove that waste yarn, all of these stitches are gonna start unraveling and it's gonna be a mess and I won't be able to find my, I won't be able to find the rows that I wanna work on. This will keep it all nice and neat and will allow me to do it in an orderly fashion. And you will see exactly what I mean in just a moment when we are ready to begin, okay? So I'm going around, I'm grabbing those, those stitches that I'm going to drop and I am going underneath it, then I'm going onto my tube like that, onto the needle, okay? And again, you would put it, if you're using yarn, then you would you would pick up the the yarn that you are going to, that you have put there, okay? I need another yellow one. Okay, let's find another yellow one. I hope that makes sense to you. So instead of using instead of using a circular knitting needle, you're going to use another um, color of waste yarn. Do something that's different than the waste yarn that you used, um, just so that that you're able to see your project as you're you're able to see what you're doing. Visual is is very important when you're doing little finicky work like this. You need to see your stitches, okay? So now that I've caught all of these. These stitches that I'm gonna drop, every one of these yellow um, stitch markers are going to be, we're going to work those stitches uh, up in a different way. We're gonna drop them and then we're gonna work them up. But before I can do that, I'm going to now remove my, my waste yarn. Now, because we are working at the on the top row, this is the, this is the waste yarn that's harder to remove. So what I do is you roll up your your little um, rim there until you get the very top strand. Then you pinch the stitch to the left of it and then pull that out, okay? Now go across maybe five or six stitches, do the same thing, pinch the stitch and pull out the end. When you do that all around the first row, then you can begin to just un unwind it with 
absolutely no problem. Okay, so almost to the end of the row there. And I'm going to finish that off, pull that out. And then you can see that it's very easy to continue on removing your yarn. So I'm just going to unravel it just like that. So you go ahead and unravel your waste yarn, get it off of your project. And when you're done that, come back and see me. Okay, I just wanna make a quick mention here before we continue on. I just inserted a little clip here. Um, Cause you will have seen when I, <laughs> when I picked up the la very last stitch, I went under the, um, the blue, which was the waste yarn rather than this working yarn. So I went back and I fixed that just so you know. Um, when, I, when I looked back over this video, I realized that I had picked up the blue instead of the, instead of the actual working yarn. So um, just wanted to clarify that and show you that I actually fixed that. <laughs> okay, let's continue. Okay, so let's let the fun begin. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go around to the front and we're going to take our first yellow stitch marker which is holding our first stitch that we have dropped or that we're going to drop we're going to take that off and by removing that now I can start dropping this row see I can just start pulling it and dropping it and if I wasn't to have caught all these little yellow ones then they would they would not be on this tubing and they would all start unraveling and you can imagine the mess that this would be it would be just impossible to do okay so now I'm going to um actually put it so that it's to my right I'm going to put my hand up through the bottom just like that it helps me <laughs> to get the tension on there then I'm going to count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 we're going to release 37 rows 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 I'm going to just double check my work 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. I'm going to just pull this up a little bit. 34, 35, 36, 37. And then I'm going to get underneath that stitch, that loop right there. Because this is where we're going to start working our purl stitch up, okay? So then I'm going to now turn it around the other way again. I'm going to put my crochet hook, and I'm using a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. You can use whatever you're comfortable with using. Um, but that's what I'm going to use. And I'm going to put my hand back up into that other end. And I'm going to start working up my stitches. So I like to hold this little loop on here with my one hand, with my one finger. Then I, loops. Then I start crocheting, grabbing that and putting it through. Grab that next line, that next row, put it through the loop on your hook. Grab the next one, put it through the loop on your hook. We're gonna go all the way up for 37 stitches. Okay, I have my hand in there because I feel if I put some tension on, on both sides so that I spread it out, I'm, I have an easier time uh, doing this stitch. Okay, so we're gonna go 37 all the way up to the top. And keep going. You know, I was thinking about, um, after I said on the video a little bit earlier that you could use this for a leg warmer, you really can't. It's not long enough. If you want to, I mean, it will cover the, the first, I don't know, maybe, I haven't measured them, but maybe six to eight inches of your lower extremity. <laughs> <laughs> but it definitely won't cover your whole leg. Um, but you know what? If you want a leg warmer, you do the same technique and you just make it longer. As long as you want to make it, okay? Knowing that uh, we're going to... The, the length that we made this is going to be in half because we're going to um, bring up the other end up to the top here and it'll be cut in half as we double it, okay? So now I got up. I finished my last, my last row there. I'm going to take out my crochet hook. I'm going to put my stitch marker back into that loop and then I'm going to put it back on back on to my tubing, okay? That way it's not going to come unraveled as I work on the next row, okay? So then I'm going these are my two stitches that um, I I'm not going to work, so I'm going to go to my next yellow stitch marker. I'm going to undo it. 
And then the fun begins. You're gonna start unraveling down 37 rows. 37 because that's close to this, that's the halfway mark really. Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and put my hand up into the other end, which is another reason why, I mean, you wanna make sure that your, your waist yarn and your, your ends are tied there so that you don't want that to start coming undone, okay? So you're going to put your hands up in there and you're going to count down 37 rows. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13, 14, 15, 16. Sometimes with this yarn, because it's got little flecks in it, it catches. So I want to make sure that uh, I don't get a knot in there. Okay, so there we go. So what did I say? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, and 37. Making sure I catch that loop because I want it to be even. I don't want to go down any further. If you do, don't panic. Just work it up um, and you'll be fine. But I, I like to keep it as, to 37 all the way on every row. Okay, and I'm going to put my hand back in that other end. Just gives me some stability and I'm going to start crocheting up. Okay, grab the bar, put it through the loop on my hook. Grab the bar, put it through the loop on my hook. Don't pull up and make this really tight and, and uh, get your tension all wonky. Just go nice and loosely and even tension all the way up, okay? And then you'll have a nicer finish at the end. So I'll finish working this row up with you and that's what you're going to do for every yellow stitch marker that you have placed, okay? All the way around. It's quite satisfying actually. I love doing this, it's so much fun. Okay, working it up. Oops, lost my hook there. Almost up to the top. See, I'm always holding the loop on my crochet hook with my finger. I just find, uh, yeah, I lost it there, see? <laughs> but for the most part, I find I have more control when that happens, okay? So then I'm going to take the loop off my crochet hook. I'm gonna go back and get my stitch marker, hook that loop, hook it back onto my tubing, onto my needle. That way it holds it in place and it's not gonna unravel. Now you'll see this looks like it's it's um, uneven, but when you get it turned around, it actually looks beautiful. And it's only wider up here because the it's it's close to the, um, the circular needle here, so it's pulling it wide, but it's gonna come out beautifully once we've got it finished here. So I'm gonna go to the next one. I'm gonna remove that. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to I'm going to unravel 37 rows and come back up and attach it like I did this one and I'm going to do that for every yellow stitch marker. So, when you're finished that, come back and I'll show you what we do next. Okay, so you've made it around. That's exciting. This is what it should look like. Okay? We've gone all the way around. We've got a little bit wider of a space at the end because again our three blue stitch markers we did not work okay but I want to take this little end that uh, was the end of my project um, and I'm going to get that out of the way it's a little bit short here but I'm just gonna generally I tie it off to to you know an, another end that's on the project somewhere but I'm gonna just take care of it now and get it out of the way so that I don't have to work around it and deal with it later okay so we're going to tie that off in a knot and then I'm just this is going to be the inside but I'm just going to oops fell off my needle here I'm just going to work it down just through a few stitches there just like that just so that I have it out of the way and I'm going to cut it off okay so that's tied off cut down we've got no other loose threads or yarn pieces ends hanging around there anywhere so we're good now if we were to count around we have 22 
stitches that are counted for, okay? All of these little stitch markers. Um, well, these, there's these first three that we marked, but then we've got uh, all the ones that we dropped plus two in between. All the way around, we've got our 22 stitches. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to put our hand in there again. We're going to bring the other end up and we're gonna put it in half just like that and see this is where it becomes reversible because the one side is beautiful flat knit just like that then the other side is our cable okay so now that we have that done we've got to now join the two together okay so we're going to find we know that our blue stitch markers are the beginning oops i'm almost going to lose that so we got to be very careful we know that our blue are the beginning of our row and the end of our row there so what i'm going to do you need to take your working yarn, this same color here, whatever you use as your working yarn. Where's my ball? And you're going to get the end and we're going to begin crocheting, okay? So what we're gonna do is, first of all, is we're going to line up. I've gotta find my end here. So we see here where we have our little tied off section here. That's, uh, that's really what we should line up with our first stitches here, okay? Because then our rows will match. So we know that this first blue one, this first blue one was our first stitch. This was our 21st and 20, 21st and 22nd stitch. But but however that goes, or no, actually it's the opposite because I, I, I brought it up through the center so it just put it over to the other side. This is stitch number one. This is stitch 22 and 21. But what, what you know, whatever. <laughs> whatever you want to call them. We're going to untie this little not there and so again this working yarn is coming out of this bottom stitch we're going to use this top stitch want to make sure that that's the stitch that we are going to work in okay so we're going to put that aside this is where i like to bring in my bobby pins okay because i want to know what my last stitch is on my other when i come around so this will be my last stitch that i'm going to work okay so that's stitch 22. So I hope you can see this. So I know that this is my first stitch and I'm going to put my crochet hook underneath that stitch and it gets easier because you're gonna pull these out as you as you work them. And then I'm gonna go across to the other side where you see those two, one on top of the other. I'm gonna take the top one, that's my first stitch, making sure that, um, that I don't lose that end there. I've gotta work that in later. Now where is my yarn end? So I'm gonna take my, my working, my yarn from my yarn ball and I'm going to loop it over top of my crochet hook just like that then I'm going to pull it through those two stitches okay pull that tight it's a it's a little bit finicky to start out with because you have a loose end there then I'm going to chain one okay so I finished I finished that stitch now I'm going to go and you, when you pull on this later, when you when you uh, tie it off, it'll tighten up that first stitch. It's just because I've got loose ends there that aren't knotted, okay? So now I'm going to look for this next stitch. This stitch is the one that we dropped, and it's hanging on there by my little yellow marker. So I'm going to go, oh, there we go. I'm going to go into that stitch, then across to the next one. Once you get two or three done, it, it becomes a lot easier. I'm gonna go through, there's three on my hook. I'm gonna go through two, and then there's two on my hook. I'm gonna yarn over and go through those two, okay? That's how I'm gonna do that. Then I'm gonna to choose to do a chain one, and I'm only gonna chain one on every second stitch. Um, and then I'm gonna remove this, because it just gives me a little bit more of, um, of a stretchiness in the end, okay? So I chained one there. Now I'm gonna go underneath this loop that's on my, on my uh, circular needle, then go under the next one, go through two, and go through two. Not gonna chain one there. I'm gonna go under the next one. Then I'm gonna go under the next one. Go through two, go through two, chain one. Now in the crochet world, <laughs> <laughs> when you're doing this, you would keep your chain ones consistent or you wouldn't do a chain one at all. Um, but we're not in the crochet world. We're in the knitting world and I'm just trying to put two knitted projects together and I think that that will give me a little bit more stretch. If I did a chain one on every 
every stitch, then it might be a little bit too loose, okay? And I don't want that. I want it to stay in place when it's on my leg. So I'm gonna go through two, go through two. This is my chain one, okay? Take that stitch marker out. Move on to the next one. See how much easier it becomes once you get once you um, get a little bit around, okay? I don't think I chained one on that one, so that's okay. If you if you forget your count, then just then just don't do a chain one and do it on the next one, okay? So there we go, and then this one I'll chain one. Because it's just a matter, and you don't even have to do it in every second stitch. Just do it every once in a while even, um, just to give it a little bit extra looseness, extra stretch, okay? Through there, through two. Okay, I'm gonna remove this stitch marker. Finally, I've had these stitch markers for so long, never used them. Um, again, because I always use bobby pins, but for this particular project, um, they're just perfect. I'm so glad I have them. Okay, go through two, go through two, then I'm gonna go through that stitch, and the next stitch. Remove this stitch marker. Yeah, so you know what? I'm not even being consistent with my chain ones. I'm not even doing it every second one. I'm just doing it every once in a while. So um, there you go. On my last one, I did it every every second one, but um, I don't I don't think it's necessary actually. So how's that for teaching you, telling you to do something and then telling you you don't have to? It's all it's all in how much stretch you want. If you have a wider um, leg at the top and you want a little bit more, uh, you want a little bit more of a stretch, then go ahead and do a, a single crochet on every second one. If if that's not enough, do do your your single crochet chain one. I'm sorry, I meant chain. I meant chain one on every second one. If you want it even wider, you do a single crochet chain one on every stitch. So that you customize for your for your own self, okay? But I find if I do it on every second one or every third one, then that's enough for me. My last uh, the last the match to this one, I did it every second one. Okay, so through two until we get to the end here, okay? So you go ahead and finish that until you get to the end and I'll meet you back. Okay, I'm at the end and I just went under my last um, blue marker there, which is my 22nd stitch. And this is where having um, a bobby pin on the last stitch of your other row helps you because it gets really tight in there and it's hard to find. So then you just find it by pulling up on your bobby pin and you finish off your, your work here. So yarn over, go through two, yarn over and go through two. So I have finished and it's also very important when you are doing this that um, you count to make sure that you've done 22 st stitches um, around, okay? Because you don't want to miss one or you're going to have an unraveled work and that would be so sad, okay? So now I can pull out my, my needles here. Get those out of the way. And I've got my end that was at the beginning and I've got my end here, which I'm going to cut off. I'm going to tie these two in a knot and then I'm going to hide them. I've got to, I've got to make sure, I don't know where this one came from, but whatever ends you have left, <laughs> you need to tie off and then hide. So I'm going to go ahead and this, this was my last stitch that I finished. I'm going to yarn over and go through that loop so that I can pull it and then it's tight and I've got a knot on there. Um, and then I'm going to, this is the easy end. You can just unravel your waist yarn. Making sure not to knot that. Okay, you get it all out of there. And then you're going to just finish this off, okay? So however it looks, you're gonna just finish it off. So I'm choosing to tie a knot there. And then I'm gonna just take one of these. I don't know how come there's three there. I must not have, I must not have hid the one end, okay? And then I'm gonna just tie that. And then I'm gonna hide all three of those ends. I'm going to snip them off just so they're even and they're easier to get um, a hold of. I'm going to pick them up. Okay. 
And I'm gonna just hide them in between the two layers. Okay, and then I'll snip that off when I'm done here. Okay, got that one. Give that a snip and that a snip. And this is the one side, see? It's just a flat knit stitch, which is, is great. Like that is, um, you know, a, a, that's one look. And then you turn it inside out, or right side out, or the other side out, <laughs> however you wanna look at it. And there you've got your other boot cuff, okay? So that's how you do it. And you can roll that down like that over your, your lower boot or if you have it inside out, which you'll see the picture on um, at the front of the video, at the beginning of the video, or like this, and have that end out. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for sticking around with me throughout through this uh, tutorial. It took um, some time to do, but you know, it's really a new technique to learn. If you haven't done rib stitching, that's a, that's um, a fun thing to learn. So I'm glad that you, you stuck with me. Thanks for clicking on my videos. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. I'd love to have you as a part of my community on my channel. Um, and I really, really appreciate the fact that you, that you took time to, to watch this and to learn. So thanks again, my friends. Take care and have a wonderful day.